In this video, I am going to show you how to do the MAC address reservation, DMZ, DTNS and port forwarding in TP-Link TL-WR840N wireless router. For this purpose, we need to find the IP address of router. First, we need to use the run command, type the ncpa.cpl. Here we will get the network interface details and then find the default gateway IP that will be our router IP. Then enter the IP in web browser. Here we need to enter the username and password. The default username and password is admin admin. For IP reservation, we need to select IP and MAC binding. Here we are able to see two options, binding settings and ARP list. If we are connected any PC or any devices in the network over the wireless or directly from the router, we can see the MAC address and IP address of particular devices. For this purpose, we need to select ARP list. Here we are able to see all of the IP address and MAC address which is already connected with the router. From here, we can load the MAC address and IP address to binding settings. Here I am selecting particular MAC address and pressing the load selected button. Once after, it is available in the binding settings. Otherwise, we need to add manually. Here I am doing from ARP list so it will be easy compare with the manual entry. In binding settings first we need to enable the ARP binding then press the save button. Once after we can select the MAC address and IP then press the enable selected button. After enabling the selected one the reservation has been completed. If you want to remove any time we can disable selected option and we can unload from ARP list. Also we can delete from the selected list. Now I am going to show you how to enable DDNS. For this purpose we need to select dynamic DNS. Then we, we need to select the service providers. In this device it will support Dyn DNS, NoIP and COMEX. Three type of DDNS it will support. Here I am using NoIP. Then I am selecting the NoIP service provider. DDNS domain name we need to enter. Then enter the NoIP account username and NoIP account password. Then press the enable DDNS connection status. Then press the login button. Then we need to press the save button. This will update our public IP details over the name. Now I am going to show you how to do the port forwarding. For this purpose we need to select the forwarding. Then enter the virtual server. Here we are able to see service port. Here we need to enter the external port or external port range. Here I am just entering 8000 to 9000. Then enter the IP address, internal IP address of the server. Then enter the internal port. Here we need to enter only starting port. No need to enter the ending port. Then select the protocol. If it is TCP, you can select TCP. If it is UDP, you can select UDP or you can select all. All means both UDP and TCP. Then select the status. Here uh, we need to enable the status otherwise the forwarding will not be working. Here you are able to see some common service ports but here we are using the custom so I am leaving as default one. Then press the save button. If you want to edit the settings you can click the edit button then you can modify and then you can save. If you want to delete or disable select the policy and press the disable button. If you want to enable, you can simply select and enable selected. The same way you can delete, you can select the policy and press the delete selected button. Now I am going to show you how to configure the DMSZ. For this purpose, inside the forwarding, we are able to see DMSZ. You need to press the DMSZ status enable, then enter the internal server IP address, then press the save button. Now or DMSZ has been enabled except virtual server or port forwarding server rest all the port is forwarded to DMZ server if you want to disable you can select the disable then press the save button thank you for watching this video if you like the video please press the like button share and subscribe